In this presentation, we're going to look at the Poisson distribution, and we're going to look at the formula. This is uh, very much an introductory type of talk. Uh, first off, what we're going to do is uh, talk about the important uh, parameter, uh, the Poisson mean. Okay, and we are going to denote it m, partly because it's easier when you're handwriting it rather than printing it. So this is all handwritten, so m just a little bit clearer. Uh, the alternative uh, to uh, notation is lambda, okay, and that's actually what you would actually encounter in books a lot. But it's just for the sake of clarity, it just I'm going to use M in the handwritten presentations, also because it uh, accords with some statistical tables. They also use M, but lambda is perfectly acceptable as well. Okay, now expect what is m it's actually what is this uh, Poisson mean la lambda let's go back there the Poisson mean lambda is the expected number of occurrences per unit period okay so if, if I was to ask uh, how many events are we expecting in the next hour or an event could be somebody turning up at our shop or phone call or something like that we would say one event per hour we're expecting on average one per hour okay doesn't necessarily have to mean that there is one that's going to happen, two could happen and then zero in the next hour or something like that. But anyway, if we're expecting one event per hour on average, we would say m is equal to one, okay? Now, quite important there is this notion of unit period. Uh, if you change the unit period, you have to change m, okay? That's quite important. So everything is done in terms of the unit period, whatever period you're working in. So whatever you're working in, just stay consistent with it. So if you're working in terms of hours, one per hour, uh, stay consistent. But if you're going to change it to two hours or eight hours, you have to change M accordingly and start from scratch. Okay? There's no simple calculations. Now, the other important matter is the mathematical constant, uh, sometimes called the Euler number or the Napier constant. Uh, e equals 2.7182. It's on your calculator. Okay. So, if you were to, uh, if you were asked to write, come up with a calculation like this, E squared, um, you can actually, um, in most calculators, there's an exponential button. So, you can just type in exp uh, in brackets too, or otherwise, you might have to type in something like this this E, then go to the power button, and then 2, something like that. Um, um, most calculators have one or the other, okay? Uh, I think uh, the ones I'm using have EXP. Anyway, that's the exponential. Uh, so that's how you might type it. Um, so uh, just a sort of bit of practice with that in your calculator. Don't expect it just magically appear. Uh, just be very careful about how you would, or just be have that prepared in advance that you know how to work with the the Euler number with your calculator, okay? The E number. Okay. Now, X is going to be a number of occurrences per unit period. I'm just going to sort of stick to unit periods from now on and sort of say, it goes without saying now that we're dealing with unit periods. So X is the number of occurrences. How many occurrences will happen? So you remember I sort of said earlier that we expect one to happen. Uh, what could happen is that uh, there could actually be no occurrences in a certain hour. There could be one occurrence, which is what would be expected. There be, could, be, could be two occurrences, uh, which is not unreasonable. Two occurrences this hour, zero occurrences the next hour. That would be an average one occurrence per hour. But we could actually get three, four, five, six occurrences per hour. Sometimes it's just these uh, uh, a, a very unusual number of occurrences per hour will every so often happen. Okay. So, uh, probably of x equals k. So what, that, what we're sort of saying there, the notation, notation here is quite important because we have x's and k's and m's and lambdas and so on. The probability of x, where that is the number of occurrences, equals k. Now k is just a sort of some number here. It's a sort of placeholder for whatever uh, number we're interested in. So the probability that the number of occurrences x is k. Okay. So for exact argument's sake. Probability of x equal to 2, the probability of two occurrences per unit period. That's how we might sort of write it, okay? So k is like a placeholder for probability of two occurrences, three occurrences, so on. k is just a sort of placeholder term for that. So this is the formula that we will be working with. This is very important. Now here, uh, it, again, it is written in terms of m, but you could actually also write it in terms of lambda. Just change m to lambda there. Uh, m to the power of k, 
okay, where k is the number of occurrences we're interested in, e to the power of minus m, okay, so just being able to calculate that in your calculator, and k factorial, okay, k factorial, that's quite important as well. Now, suppose uh, m is equal to 1, well, we, we might be interested in, we're going to use this m is equal to 1, so we're going to uh, calculate the probability of x equal to 1, x equal to 2, and x equal to 3, or x equal to 0, x equal to 1, and x equal to 2, uh, we'll leave 3, and uh, all on the basis that m is equal to 1. So we're going to stick with m equal to 1 from now on. So uh, what we have to do there is exponential of minus 1, e to the minus 1, just check that you would get the, uh, not at uh, 4 decimal places, not 0 0.36779, uh, okay, just check that calculation yourself and make sure you're able to calculate that, okay. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate the probability of no occurrences and how we might write that is probability of x equal to 0, okay. <clears throat> so that is, let's write this out again, uh, we have e to the minus m we have, uh, sorry, k factorial. Here k is k is equal to zero. So we have n to the power of k and k factorial. That is the probability of x equal to k. Uh, by the way, just quite often what would happen here is you would get these sort of formulas in the back of your exam paper or they might appear in your statistical table somewhere uh, that you don't have to memorize them. Okay, so uh, here we're going to m is equal to 1, so we have 1 to the power of 0, okay, that is 1 to the power of 0 times e to the power of minus 1 over 0 factorial, okay. Now, just as a sort of quick remark, first off, 0 factorial. And this is where a lot of people go wrong, they will put in well, that's zero. It's not. At zero factorial is one. That is very, very important. Okay? Almost expect people to um, uh, get that wrong. Now, and the, and the second one, anything to the power of zero, anything, if or anything, anything to the power of zero is al always one. Okay? Anything to the power of zero is always one. So what we have here is probability of x equals zero is one times e to the minus one all over one. So that is e to the minus one, and as we said earlier, that is not point three six seven nine. Okay. What I'm going to do here for now is I'm going to slightly make a slight digression. The complement of probability of x equal to zero. What is the complement of that? Well, it's actually the probability if x equals one or more. Okay? The probability of x equal to, uh, greater than or equal to one is the complement complement of probability of x equal to zero. And that is equal to one minus 0 0.3679 and that would be roughly speaking 0 0.6321 okay it's always quite useful to think of the complements there so it's the probability of nothing happening probability of x equal to zero or the probability of something happening okay and they're the complements of each other okay now that is probability of x greater than or equal to one I'm just going to go back to what my original plan was prob calculate the probability of x equal to one this is exactly one occurrence in the last instance there I talked about probability of x greater than or equal to one that was one or more this is the probability of just one, okay? So this is m to the power of k. Sorry, I'll just write out the formula there again. e to the power of minus m all over k factorial. Here k is equal to one, so what we have here is one to the power of one times e to the power of minus one over one factorial, okay? One factorial is also one. So 1 to the power of 1, that's just 1, that's just 1, so what we're left with is uh, e to the minus 1, and that is also 3679. That is just really a coincidence that it, 
it's just in this particular uh, situation that you actually would get the exact uh, we just happen to get the exact same number that's a coincidence it's just that it will happen every so often that the probability of x equal to 1 is equal to the probability of x equal to 0 okay just a coincidence this time around and finally one more probability of x equal to 2 is m to the m to the k we'll just write out the formula every time so we have it all in our head okay and that is equal to 1 squared okay times e to the minus 1 all over 2 factorial okay so that works out as 1 squared is 1 2 factorial is 2 so what we have is half to the minus 1 and that is equal to uh, 0 0.3679 divided by 2 and that is not point one eight uh, three nine. Well, we could sort of say three nine five or something like that, but we'll just stick it as not point three nine. Okay. Now uh, I'm going to do one more thing here. I was going to end it there, but I actually just remark upon one more thing. Suppose we're actually asked the probability of two or more. Okay. Probably be x greater than or equal to two. What is the complement? Okay. Probably of x equal to that. What, uh, what we're interested in, or what's the complement of that, is uh, I always think uh, the complements are always very, very useful. That is 1 minus the probability, probability of x less than or equal to 1. Okay. And that is one, uh, the probability of x less than or equal to 1 is the probability of x equal to 0 plus the probability of x equal to 1. Okay. Those are the only two sort of possible outcomes. So what we have there is 1 minus 0 0.3679 plus 0 0.3679. Okay. Uh, well, this is just a little bit of calculator work now. Just we could actually solve that. That is 1 minus 0 0.7. Oh, hang on. Uh, I've just done it in my calculator. Uh, seven three. Uh, I'm just going to keep it the five decimal places. Five. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, the four decimal places. It doesn't actually match up exactly. I'm just. Uh, it's just the, the way I've rounded it, and that work, works out to be not point two six four two. Okay. And again, it's the rounding. I'm just rounding it down to four decimal places. There's a couple of decimal places I'm missing, but just the four decimal places. And that is it really. So, yeah, uh, what the key things there? The complements are always very useful, okay? Uh, uh, particularly when you're dealing with x equal to 0, which is, tends to come up in a lot of exams. Remember that the 0 factorial is 1, and anything to the power of 0 is also 1, okay? And also, yeah, the complement rule, and then just actually just a bit of uh, uh, practice with the calculator. So that's an introduction to the Poisson distribution formula.